This will be the basic workflow for PIX4D. This video will be a little bit longer than the other ones, but I want to walk through some of the pitfalls and how to run through this for the initial processing. You've already gone out, you've taken the pictures, you have somewhere between hopefully 10 to 20 of them that are geotagged, and you're ready to start your project. So after you open up PIX4D, you're going to go to New Project, you're going to put in your name for it. I run everything by date, so I'm going to put uh, the date of the capture, 06-12-2017 is when I took these pictures. This was the crash lab, and since I already have, and I did this on my phone too, by the way, and since I already have another one labeled the same thing, I'm going to put an alpha uh, after that. So I'm going to go to next, and it's going to ask for the pictures to be loaded in here. Um, you can just drag and drop your photos into that, uh, that area. Um, just be careful here because you have to leave the photos in whatever file they are currently in. So in other words, uh, I suggest you put them somewhere on your hard drive and you don't move them. If you move them, it will be a disconnect in the program and next time you try and open it, it won't allow it. So I'm just going to drag and drop the pictures that I took onto there and I'm going to hit next. Now it's going to take a look at these photos and I mentioned the geotagging and in this case, I took the photos with my phone and I only moved about 20 feet or so around this crash site. Uh, so there's just not enough difference in the the coordinates in order for PIX4D to really be used in those. And that's why it's saying, hey, they're most, a lot of them are very close or the same, and we're going to discard these geotags. If you do a, a project that you are using a larger area, instead of like I did, if it's only 20 feet apart from the first to the last, um, you will probably be not see this, and you'll be able to use the geotagging. In this case, it's saying, hey, dummy, I can't use them. I'm getting rid of them. You can also get rid of them by just hitting this clear button right here, and that will get rid of the, uh, the geotagging in those two columns. All right, I'm going to hit next, and it's going to tell me that same warning again. I'm going to get to here. This is the coordinate system, which I'm really not using this time because it's not going to allow me to do it. And I get to this next page right here. And what we're going to want to select is this 3D maps, the very first one. This basically takes longer to run, but it's going to give us absolutely everything that we are going to want here. Um, and that is the orthomosaic, in other words, the stitched together picture of what we have. We're going to get a digital surface model, in other words, showing elevations, and we are going to get this 3D mesh, a 3D picture of it, and we're going to get the, uh, the point cloud over here. So that's what we're going to want to have. I'm going to hit finish. Notice this is not clicked right here because there's one more thing I want to do. If you have that selected, deselect it now, and then we're going to hit finish and we're going to come to this page right here. Now, if your geotags worked, this should be zoomed in and you should have a picture of the area that you are at. Since my geotags were discarded, it just puts a map up of the world uh, because that's all it knows. So right before we get started, we're going to want to do one more thing because one of the objectives on this is that we export a 3D PDF because that's something that somebody can take a look at the 3D project even though they don't have PIX4D Mapper. The way we're going to do that is we're going to come up to Process, we're going to go to Processing Options, and we're going to come in to this page when it talks about this point cloud and mesh. It'll probably come up on that page right there. We're going to click Textured Mesh, and we're going to come down here, and we're going to click on that 3D PDF. If you don't do that, it's not going to create that 3D PDF, which is what we want. By the way, this object file right here is one that you can open up in uh, a lot of different programs, including for uh, 3D printing is a common one to use for that. We're going to click OK, and that is going to take us back to our this page right here. Each one of these is selected. We're, gonna, we're going to uh, create a program in each one of those, and I'm going to hit Start. It's going to start running through this, and just realize the computer I'm using this on um, is a very high-end computer. It has uh, uh, 32 gigs of memory in it. It has a solid-state hard drive, and it has the best processor that uh, Intel is currently putting out. So this computer is going to process this project in probably about 20 minutes or so. Um, realize that for you, it may take two to three hours, depending on your computer. So I'm going to hit pause right now, and I'm going to come back in a few minutes when this thing is done. All right, well, I'm back with you, and this is about five minutes later. It took to run that, uh, that set of photos here, so it did, did that pretty quick. One of the things that you're going to turn in for this uh, activity is this quality report. Realize it's going to spit out a quality report when it finishes up the initial processing, the point cloud and mesh, and the 3D 
at the end of it. The one at the end is what you want because this one's going to include everything. You can click on this PDF button right there and you can save that as a PDF and that's what you will turn in at the end of this module as the assessment. This has lots of good information in it. I'm not going to go through it all. If you're interested, you can take a look at that kind of stuff in there and figure out what everything is. A couple things that you'll see in here. Um, one of these pictures, this is overlap. That looks real good. Um, again, you can read about these. Uh, you can Google it if you want and learn about these things. One of the things that isn't real good about this project that I did uh, is the matching. What you really want to have is every picture basically matching to every picture. And this is showing you where it was able to match things as it, I went around the project. Because of the small size of my project, that's typically what is going to happen uh, with this thing. What you prefer, though, is having lines all across here and have it be nice and black and darker lines are the more, more tie points that it has in there. Um, you can also see all the other information that might be in there and then it's going to get down to the end and it's going to tell you how long it took to run the whole thing and give you the rest of the information. So that's one of the things that we're looking for in this one. Um, you can see the finished product looks something like that which doesn't look very impressive but we're going to come over here and we're going to add the point cloud and we're going to get rid of the cameras. Now again something that you can play around with if you want to but not required is you can learn in here how to take and change the processing area. So now I can define a small area in here that I want to process versus getting all this extra information on the outside of it just to pretty up what this is. And so we'll zoom in here a little bit on this. Um, so that's what it looks like with the point cloud. Um, but now we're going to click on that triangular mesh and it's going to load up um, kind of do the interpolation between all the different points and it's going to come up with a mesh that is going to be layered. Now the thing about the mesh is it's not exact points it's in, again interpolation and the best guess of the program where everything is so it might not be it might not be perfect. Uh, but now you can see we have the crashed aircraft and now we can look around this thing in 3D and we have the data which we can now measure as long as we were able to use the uh, um, the coordinates we can measure the different points in here and where everything's at. You can see with this even though we tried to do the best job we could without getting things in the back you have little anomalies like this area right here over the top of it which can be trimmed off and things like that uh, in the uh, in the picture. If I get rid of the point cloud it'll drop away some of those other points in there and you'll get just the uh, the 3D mesh of that area. But you can see that is a, a, a pretty neat little thing to be to be able to produce. All right, so the other things that you're going to be interested in here is you're going to go to where all of the outputs are for the um, the project. So in this case, all my pro all the all of them get outputted to this this file folder here. I'm going to find it down here. This is a Crash Lab Phone A, and that's where my data is going to sit. If I want to take a look at that 3D PDF, I'm going to go in to that folder and I'm going to pull up the 3D mesh and inside there I'm going to see this file right here which is one you're required to turn in which is going to be the 3D mesh. Again if you open that up into your uh, Acrobat reader depending on which which version you have you should be able to open that up and see this same thing that I'm looking at over here except in that PDF. Again it won't look great here for what I'm doing with this one because I haven't defined the area that I want it to put in there but if I did that it would be a fairly clean clean look in there. So those are the things that you're going to want to turn in is that 3D PDF as well as the other uh, report and now you've seen a little bit on what Pix4D can do for you lots going on in this program. You can see all sorts of things up here. If you're interested in any more of this information and how this program works or anything, uh, please don't hesitate to drop me a line. This is the primary thing we use in the flight department at Embry-Riddle for all of our drones. You can imagine what this would look like with uh, uh, data above the, the crash site as well and putting all that together. So thanks for watching and good luck.